Ah, today is a great day. You're so excited because you finally finished your data collection, and it's time to analyze. But there are a ton of interesting questions you could ask of your data. So what do you do? I guess you'll just dive in and start running a bunch of analyses, right? Please don't. Just don't. Here's why. Many statistical tests use an alpha level of 0.05 as their level of significance. It is critically important to understand that that is the level of significance for only one test. You cannot run multiple tests, each at an alpha level of 0.05, then claim that significant effects were only 5% likely to be due to chance. Each of those analyses has an alpha level of 0.05, but when you step back and look at all of the analyses, the family-wise error rate, as it's called, is actually much higher. Think about it like this. If we rolled a six-sided die, what is the probability that we would roll a three? Well, if we only roll it once, the probability will be one out of six, or 0.167. What if we were allowed to just keep rolling until we got a three? Would it still make sense to say that the probability was one out of six? This is basically like a child who's losing miserably at Monopoly, constantly re-rolling the dice until they finally land on Boardwalk. If you get to keep trying, you have more chances for unlikely events to occur, and your probability increases. It's as easy as that. The family-wise error rate can be calculated with this equation, where alpha sub c is the level of significance for one comparison, and k is the total number of comparisons being conducted. So let's go back to our dice rolls. What is the probability of rolling a 3? If we roll it once, the family-wise error rate is 0.167. If you get two tries, it almost doubles to 0.306. By the time you get to 25 rolls, you are near certain to roll a 3. Think of each of these dice rolls like a comparison between the number we want and the number we got. If we want the number 3 and we got the number 6, we didn't match on that trial. But we get to keep trying, remember? If we get to keep doing comparisons, the probability of matching increases. The exact same thing is happening when we're doing a lot of different statistical tests. In this case, the number that we want is really just anything under 0.05. But now let's imagine that we got a 0.08. Here, we as the researchers have a choice. Option 1, stop there and report what was found. Option 2, roll again. What many researchers decide to do in this instance is to run a second analysis. Maybe they'll change out a variable, or perhaps exclude certain cases. It's really important to understand that this is no different than that Monopoly losing child rolling the dice over and over again until they finally get the number that they want. So again, I beg of you, please don't do this. We have options for avoiding the multiple comparisons problem. If the original analysis you were intending to use was a fairly simple one, you may be able to find analyses which consider multiple variables or groups all in one go. For instance, instead of doing three t-tests, you might complete one one-way ANOVA. Instead of running four regressions, you might just do one multivariate GLM. If you do absolutely have to do multiple comparisons, you can apply a correction to each of those comparisons. This might be something like a Bonferroni correction or a Benjamini Hochberg. Lastly, Bayesian analyses do not suffer the multiple comparisons problem because they are not using probabilistic thresholds to make significance decisions. Multiple comparisons are a huge problem in science. In my opinion, this is because of our somewhat archaic method of distributing and dispersing data and research to the broader scientific community. Simple steps could be taken, and have begun to be taken, to safeguard against researchers constantly re-rolling the dice. This might include pre-publishing intro and methods sections, including data analytic strategies, with a promise to have the paper published in full upon completion and following additional peer review of the remaining sections. More than anything, it is incredibly important for the scientific community to realize that there are simply too many easily available options to allow the multiple comparisons problem to continue to muddy our literature.